I could tell Corey to do his job and just assign someone to go next. <laughs> I thought Dennis, no one else stepped up besides Dennis. Damn. Oh, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I will I never, kid, ever be I that kid. angry. You've gone. Dennis says, I'll go. I said, I don't want to go at all. And Adam <laughs> sat there silently like a smug boy. So I just was like, oh, that's the order. Hey, Stop, John, it, it worked itself out. <laughs> Welcome to the Movie Toast Podcast. We're here again coming at you with some fresh new reviews. Trying to give us a team name. Thinking, let's just go with like Incredibles characters. No. I'm here with my co-hosts, Jack Jack. I guess that'd be Dennis. How you doing, Dennis? Oh, I will t- accept ultimate power. That <laughs> sounds awesome. I'm doing great, guys. I'm happy to be hanging out with you again. Most excellent. There we go. I'm here with my Edna Mode Tommy. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How you doing? I'm good. Um, Frozone would probably be Adam here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where's my super suit? Yep, I, that's, <laughs> that's the perfect line. <laughs> are you a syndrome? Who, who are I, you? Are you Mr. Fan? You think uh, so? Because of all the negative reviews, I'd be a bad guy. <laughs> but I'll just go with Bob, I guess. Oh, there you go. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Married nice. to Holly Hunter, lucky guy. <laughs> could have gone with a lot of different characters. Yeah. What a movie. Probably could have been Screen Slaver, too. Anyway, Tommy, what'd you see? Ladies and gentlemen, you're in for a treat because you are going to get a second opinion of a movie that's been reviewed already. Second opinions. <laughs> Sloppy seconds. Uh, I'm talking about the comedy romance movie on Netflix starring David Spade and it's called The Wrong Missy. I took oh. Adam's advice and I went and watched it. Rather than tell you guys what the movie's about, you, I'm just going to send you over to our other episode and go check it out because Adam had a spot on synopsis of what the movie's about. I mean, I can give you a very quick... Yeah, give a quick one. Very, man. very quick. Basically, David Spade's character, Tim, he thinks he's inviting the woman of his dreams, his perfect match, his soulmate, mm-hmm. to a work retreat in Hawaii. But he ends up texting the wrong Missy. That is a spot-on review. That is so much better than mine, man. <laughs> it took me 10 minutes to say what you said in 30 seconds. My hat's off um, to you, sir. So he had two Missies in his phone. And one Missy, the one that he thought he was texting, was his soulmate. And the one he ended up texting was in the beginning of the movie. And she is hilarious, but in a way that it makes you hate everything about her. Right? Is that, she, is that yeah, a, fair to say? Yeah, she's super inappropriate, but she's super pretty spirited and fun. Yeah. She plays a she plays a joke on David Spade when they first meet. It's a blind date mm-hmm. and she texts him and says, "Hey, I'm I'm over at the bar. I'm wearing a blue dress or whatever." So he goes up to the lady in the blue dress and she's there with her boyfriend because it's not Missy. Missy was playing a prank on him. And it's like, "Oh, right off the bat, that's just a dick move right there. That's a red flag. I would have been like, "All right, I'm out of here. See ya." But, <laughs> but to make matters worse, Tommy, she then tries to get David Spade to fight the guy and David Spade wants yeah. to Oh my god. Him. And this dude is like, this guy, I think they even reference it. He looks like Jason Momoa, but he's not. But yep. they, didn't they reference that in the Yeah, and later on, Aquaman? she's like, Aquaman's getting angry out there. Yeah, it was really funny. <laughs> what I did not want to happen, I saw it coming, and I did not want this to happen, and it happened, and I'm so angry. And then it ended, and I was like, oh, you know what? Okay, I'm not too, I'm not too mad. Uh, I saw, I was like, oh my God, they're going to fall for each other. They're going to end up together. And we're going to, the end of the second act, beginning of the third act's going to be her getting upset at him after he's already fallen for her. And then he's going to have to try to win her back, which yeah, he classic need. rom-com classic rom-com. That's pretty much the movie. And what you know, what'd you think of it? I really enjoyed it. Nick Swartzen is showing his age. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. He's still really funny and his character is brilliantly written. He's, uh, is he his boss or is he just another coworker? He's like a HR guy. Okay. He's best friend, essentially. Oh yeah, HR. And it's so funny. If David Spade receives a text, Nick Swartzen knows about it already. (laughs) It's like, he's like, dude, you shouldn't have your passwords the same thing that you have on your work computer or you shouldn't accept emails on your work computer, man, because I'm, I'm, hr and i I have that access to everything so and Mm -hmm. (laughs) like there's one thing uh she i guess she texts 
when he texted the wrong Missy before he found out it was the wrong Missy, he's like, Hey, I got this work thing in Hawaii. You want to go? And she replied back. Yes. And Nick Swartzen immediately texted David Spade and went, yes. And he jumps up in the office. He's like, yes. That's... So that, that right there is just, it's really funny. Yeah. Uh, what the, how they did that character. The lady that played the wrong Missy, Lauren Lapkus. She has that face of like, good Lord. Like, <laughs> this is funny. Like, I, I, I just, everything about her, she played the part perfectly. Mm-hmm. You got any tidbits for this one? Or? I, no. I, anything that we said about when Adam reviewed it was the good ones. There's, I think there's only one other tidbit and it's a stinker, so I'm not going to tell you. Stinker. <laughs> stinker. stinker. And you're not going to hear it toasters no so yeah. deal so with if it you want to see, if you want to read it go up on imdb and find it yeah it's you not get tommy's to, job anymore. you get to guess which one is the one tommy liked <laughs> wait wait what was that adam you're calling me out on my job fine i'm gonna tell him just yeah because. tell him that stinker so vanilla ice and david spade also oh by the way vanilla ice is uh makes a cameo in in the movie uh vanilla ice and david spade ice, also ice co-starred spade. in Corey's favorite netflix special of all time the ridiculous six yeah <laughs> no <laughs> i don't think i finished that movie i don't think i got to the end of it but th- this was a happy madison right yes yes sir okay <laughs> okay now what, um, what, what what was your color light yeah oh green by far go watch it thanks for saving people time out of their precious lives wasting time going to imdb to find a stinker someone <laughs> would do it. yo so thank you for you're thanking me for doing my job got it yeah. <laughs> all right um, who's up next i have the nick cassavetes written and directed film alpha dog starring justin timberlake anton yelchin and Ooh. i i gotta say i love to hate him villain emile hirsch all starring in this movie together. And Uh this is a true crime movie, uh, kind of a biopic. It's a little bit of a time capsule. It was released in 2006. And one of the cool things is that the case was actually still open when the movie came out. Or when they were in production of the movie. And they had to like adjust what they told you at the closing credits according to how things were playing out but there's a story of a southern california drug dealer he's this guy who is like the son of another already infamous crime guy born into a crime family more or less but he he kind of had everything handed to him some guy owed him money but a guy who owed him money he got to try to be the one to go get the money back it was this whole fucked up deal. Well, he got bitter at the guy who owed him a favor. The guy who owed him a favor was not going to take his shit. So they oh, kind oh, of oh. were barking back and forth at each other. The movie tells the story of this really interesting opportunity this dickhead takes where he kidnaps the brother of the guy who owes him money in order to try to leverage the money out of him. Well, he kidnapped the brother of the craziest motherfucker in Southern <laughs> California. Oh. Like, <laughs> oh my God, I, I cannot possibly give enough props to Ben Foster. I can't call him the hero of the movie because he's not exactly a good person. You probably <laughs> end up siding with his wishes. You do learn a lot of information about his background. He's been to prison. He's gone away for drug charges. It's clear he's coming clean. He's getting off of meth. And Uh. he has apparent Aryan Brotherhood ties. And he's of Jewish descent. So this is literally the background of this guy. This isn't the main plot of what ends up happening to this particular character. Can I I ask a question real quick? So Anton Yelchin is playing Ben Foster's younger brother. He's the one that gets kidnapped. Okay. All right. Go continue. Go ahead. Okay, so Emil Hirsch is rolling with his boys, one of his boys being Justin Timberlake, and he sees Anton Yelchin literally walking down the sidewalk, and he decides, let's jump him and take him in our fucking cargo van. And in front of many other witnesses, which testified in court, they jumped him, they kicked him, they beat him to the ground, then just picked him up and threw him in the side of a van. And I, I totally, I thought this would be worth mentioning. Uh, the first time I watched this movie, I was just finding out they filmed a lot of this movie in the same place where I just had just moved to, uh, kind of the Northridge area in the San Fernando Valley. And then it, a lot of it takes place in like Pomona and just that part of the Desert Valley-ish. I can't wait to watch that. That, that edge of stuff. But so they're, they're hitting the locations. I haven't seen it. That's great. Oh, oh dude. It's amazing. I, oh. How did you watch I, it? I, was it on Prime? So uh, right now, Alpha Dog is available on Netflix. Oh, I have sweet. watched it. 
it, it is in uh, Val's personal DVD collection. It is honestly one of her favorite movies that she showed me when we first met in film school. Nice. So that was something we got to bond over of just like, he, and it is just excellent filmmaking. Um, I will point out for those that kind of sensitive to certain language, it is kind of a time capsule in how they talk to each other. It's the early 2000s. There's a particular F word that I'm not a fan of that gets used friendship? a whole lot. I'm There's out. a lot of friendship. There's a lot of friendship to be tossed around. But I'm out. I'm not watching that anymore. the unfortunate cadence of speech of just, this is how they spoke. So mm. if that's going to bother you, that, well, that and might And you said this was based away, on the a true story, right? This is based on a true story. Uh, Jesse James Hollywood is the real name of Emil Hirsch's character. Okay. And he went to prison not long after the film was released in real life because there was a lot of evidence that was still floating around. Spoilers. Spoiler. He is found in South America. It is many years from the completion of the story of the film to that point in real life. A lot of time passes. There's a genuinely interesting amount of information you can just look up on your own outside of what the film tells you. But the story of the film is just crazy. Yeah. It is just, the whole movie is just one of the stories that you, you read in a, in a blog or a Reddit post that you kind of half think is, eh, okay. So they've embellished some details. The worst parts of this movie are the true parts. <laughs> like, <laughs> Does Bruce Willis play Emil Hirsch's dad? Yes. We see a um, lot of a lot of him or no? Uh, no, we don't see a whole lot. Um, in fact, Harry oh, Dean Stanton oh my God. is in the movie playing Emil Hirsch's grandfather. But they've got <laughs> some great scenes. They, they aren't in a whole lot of the movie. Same with Sharon Stone. But the scenes they're in are powerful. And that goes with the rest of the cast. Amanda Seyfried is in the movie for only a few scenes. But even then, the little bit she's in it, she displays like she is really fucking good at what she does. <laughs> it's, um, so Sharon Stone were, plays Anton Yelchin's mom. Yes. And okay. actually, kind of a fun thing is you do see her in two different periods of time, before and after oh, okay. the story was known. Cool. So it, it's, it's heavy. I know. I, 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 along with the, the, uh, other, the other warning, I will say, the movie gets, it gets heavy. So be, be ready for a not happy ending. Wait, I, does it jump back and forth between timelines? Not much. Not There's much. a little bit okay. at the beginning, and then most of it's at the end. Got it. it. All it, right, cool. The movie wants to get through telling the story. It's a very interesting biopic based on a true story that Alpha the unfortunate dog. parts of the story are all true. And I have to give it a solid green light. Well, I cannot it. recommend it enough to people who are into that type of storytelling. Just it's like uh, what Scorsese would call cinema when he's bashing Marvel movies. There you go. Uh, yes. Yeah, like, this is actually a movie. You know, like <laughs> Nick Cassavetes knocks it out of the park. Cool. Green light. Nice. Mm -hmm. Tidbits? Yeah, yeah Tommy, Dennis, what about them a, tids? You, you had one or two, right, that you wanted to, because of what you were mentioning earlier? The, about ben Foster. That, yes. I, I, thank you. I, I, I got to say, there's a couple solid ones just um, as far as uh, Ben Foster's commitment to the role. This yeah. motherfucker, first of all, just the, the scenes he has in the movie are intense. You can just see how physical he gets with the, his other castmates. He has people literally throw him around the set hmm. while he liter he continues to put up a fight. Um, there is. It sounds like he did a like a Leo kind of thing with the with the bleeding thing on set with Sharon Stone, yeah. right? Uh, she, yes. Th th there you go. Um, there is a scene where Sharon Stone attacks Ben Foster's character, and he just takes every hit. In the context of the scene, you know he's feeling guilty. And he just uh, takes every swing she has to offer at him. And he stands rigid and just every blow hits him. There's no way those shots couldn't have hurt him. But apparently he, his nose was broken and he was bleeding on set. And because although it was an accident, he wanted yeah. it to happen. Uh, ben Foster was all about that shit. He that told was, uh, yeah, yeah. He, you know, that's, that's hardcore when you're like, no, 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 no. Hit me harder because it needs to be realistic. Please make my yes. nose bleed. And then mm. she did it. And everyone on set is probably like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Yeah. I can't imagine that. The other Ben Foster one that I thought was worth mentioning was because of the nature of his character and what's kind of loosely mentioned in his history, the fact that he's a meth addict. 
apparently Ben Foster spent a significant amount of time taking glaucoma drops to dilate his eyes. And then a lot of the movie takes place at night. So apparently he spent a good amount of time like hiding in the bushes, hiding in the shadows and then staying out of the set lights and covering his eyes. Yeah. That would be his eyes as dilated as possible. So when he walked on the set, he just looked wigged out of his fucking mind. And I got to say it plays like he's, a scary motherfucker in this Jeez. movie, but it's well, it's it's not Leatherface scary. It's like I believe this was a human, mm-hmm. like this <laughs> this person walked the earth. Cool, excellent. Well, Adam, what did you see this week? Anything lighter? I mean, I like to think it's lighter than Alpha Dog, but what do I know? You guys remember. <laughs> The classic Coen Brothers movie, The Big Lebowski. Oh, oh yes, yeah. sir. Oh, yeah. What yeah, a movie. Sir. I, I didn't watch that this week, but I oh, did. Oh, you yeah. son of a bitch. <laughs> you son I of a bitch. I did watch a slight spinoff. It's not officially a spinoff. <gasps> uh, it's a movie I called know what you're talking about. The Jesus Rolls. Oh, you oh, son of a bitch. Yes. I wanted to watch that. John oh, Totoro is back as Jesus. Oh, and it, it, it's a movie with a star-studded cast. You got Bobby Carnavale, Susan Sarandon, Pete Davidson, John Hamm, J.B. Smoove, Christopher Walken, and, and so many other people. <laughs> pop up this movie, this movie is written and directed by John Turturro himself. And Jesus, like it, 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 <laughs> it should be a powerhouse. But I'm sorry, I'm gonna drop some truth bombs here. <gasps> oh no, this is truth is much a letdown. It's just oh. so. Jesus gets out of jail, and then him and Bobby Cannavale steal a car, go do some random stuff, return the car, then pick up a girl, then get another car. They do some random stuff. The movie just drags. They then drop that girl off. They steal another car. They want to have sex, so they go to a women's prison. They pick up Susan Sarandon. They have, like, a three-way. Nothing happens in this movie. It's Oh, my God. It's just random shit's happening. And it's like, why is this happening to me? Like, this guy was a great character in one movie. And in this Damn. movie, it's, like, it's not even a comedy. So many times I'm like, I feel like this should be funny, but it's not. Oh, How's, how's Pete Davidson right. in this? Pete yeah. Davidson is, yeah, nobody, that's the thing. Nobody's really bringing their all. Pete the two Davidson. guys that really kill it. And all these big names are kind of just cameos for the most part. John Hamm is very hilarious in it. And it opens with Christopher Walken. I was the say, opening of the it, movie yeah. with oh. Christopher Walken and Jesus, <clears throat> hilarious. I'm like, I'm in for a great movie right now. Here's the thing. It's kind of a remake of a French movie. And I don't know what the French movie uh, is. Oh. He kind of adapted it and just put his character into it. So, so you know, uh, well, hmm. that makes explains why it's horrible. Cause yeah, I, I, I French. like French movies, but. Honestly, this is definitely a red light in my opinion. I wouldn't but, waste but my time. Does it feel like a French movie with like yeah, Barney literally. Rubble jammed into it? Like Kind of, yeah. <laughs> because they got like weird music that you would hear in a French movie. There's weird cuts. Uh, uh, it's just so odd. So weird. I gotta ask. I want it so okay. much more. I'm really curious. Does any part of it feel like it was ever a Coen Brothers movie when you're Not watching it? Not at all. It? Not at all. Oh, Nothing. Oh. Okay, slightly. I got another Dirty. question too. It's Dirty. similar to that. Does Jeff Bridges make a small, <laughs> little, tiny cameo at all? No Jeff no! Bridges. No John Goodman. No. no nothing at all. Oh, oh, we horrible. just know the only thing that connects this to the Big Lebowski, besides the name of the character, he does a little bowling. That's it. That's all. That's it. Yep. Wow. Damn. Yeah. Well, Blow okay. The down. Wow. Sorry, guys. Yeah. I know I'm still going to watch it. I was going to watch Adam, it, too. Thank you, Adam. I, I genuinely appreciate that review. Yeah. But, and I hope yeah. you movie toasters appreciate what Adam <laughs> did for you. Because you are looking forward to it as well. <laughs> but I will say, Tommy, you should check it out. And maybe you might I'm love it. To. And I would love to hear your take on it, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to check it out. it was a red light. It's it, a red Adam, light. But everyone has different opinions. That's it's a red light, but go watch it. It's a red light if, for me. Well, if you don't like it, it's bad. Tom, yeah, Tommy I was, gonna was say, really looking forward to this Well, movie. I was going to say, but normally, interesting. Th- it's interesting because Adam and I normally feel the same way about movies. Yeah. So it's it's going to be interesting because if I do like it, this would be one, of, the, one of those movies that we don't see eye to eye on. And I think fantastic. out of the 51 episodes that we've done in this show, I think this is the first red light I've given. I could be wrong. But oh, damn. No, I normally, I've heard. I normally try to fight i say yeah i i don't care about it but it's yellow you should see it this one don't do it don't do it wow 
I've I've heard I've heard at least one other red light, but okay. I don't remember the movie. Fair enough. I give no. red lights out like they're candy. <laughs> yeah, you do on Halloween. Yeah. Fucking strawberry skittles, man. You should probably <laughs> every red light I've ever given because I'm the resident curmudgeon. I'm not even really myself in this show. I'm a character of a guy <laughs> named Corey Ryan who's a secret <laughs> incel and who hates all media and has a far right <laughs> perspective. Just like you know, I didn't know if you knew any of that was going on. Uh, <laughs> I just want climbs you to out of the garbage the can. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Every uh, so, every movie I don't like, you should probably go see. But, um, we got the review. Sorry. We got the we got the red light, green light. Now it's time for pineapple. We got, we got some tidbit. The pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, these these tidbits kind of go hand in hand with each other, and I think they're very important. I'm going to start with the most important one uh, that I think everyone needs to know. Ethan and Joel Cohen have not endorsed this movie as an official. Oh. There's a good reason for that, Tommy. Jesus There's a Christ. good reason. Okay. And that leads to the second tidbit, which is the, the only involvement that the Coens have in this movie is they gave John Turturro permission to use the Jesus character. That is it. Wow. They don't want their name associated. They did not endorse it. it had nothing like, to do with it except they gave him permission to use that. So could character. it be a dream or something maybe? <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> well... And I think that the reason why they gave him permission is because of this third tidbit, which is although the character was in fact created by the Coens, it was John Turturro who came up with the eccentric personality and mannerisms that we all know and love. Oh, and so, this is one thing I want to jump on talking about okay. that. It's been a while since I've watched The Big Lebowski and I love it. But in the beginning of this movie, I feel like... John Totoro is really hard to understand. Like he's doing this super thick, heavy accent that I don't think was fully in the Big Lebowski. And it took like 40 minutes for me to understand everything he was saying. It was weird. Uh, it, it was kind of, no, he's kind of like that in the Big Lebowski, but he, he might've been amping it up for I, yeah, this movie. Definitely. So, yeah. You know what John, T- this is totally off topic, but you know what John Totoro's <laughs> best character is? Tell me. Is, it's anger management. Like oh, guy. yeah. Oh, my God. No, no, no. I, I know you hate TV, but there's a great <laughs> fucking thriller kind of mystery kind of court trial thing called The Night Of. He plays a lawyer, and his character is amazing. Like, <laughs> we, we find out he has feet issues. He's in love with a uh, prostitute, and he's just a weird guy, oh. and it's amazing. If you have HBO, what fucking show is this? check it out. It's called The uh, Night damn. Of. It's amazing. Wow. Oh. I'm with you, Corey. Anger management. Is... Yeah, anger. <laughs> yeah, anger management. Is you know, I mean, oh and the other thing, Adam, with TV, when you give the writers, you know, 47 years of our lives to develop a character in a form of like strange, you know, self masturbation of development, like whatever writers do on TV, and like four of the seasons are a total waste of time. Well, no, this you was can, a limited you can develop a character. No, no, that no, far. But- this is a limited series. It's like eight episodes and done. Oh, it is? That's yeah. like a long movie? Maybe. Okay. That's a great I'm going to check it out, but I, I have me on a, you caught me. This is an exception to every rule, and you found <laughs> one. Don't watch Jesus Rolls. Go and watch The Night Of. Okay. That's my suggestion. Here's my review. I watched Scoob. There we go. The uh, animated film. Adam Good night, folks. Stay toasty. No. <laughs> Here's my review. No. Wow, two no. red lights in a row on this episode. Whoa. What what made you hate it so much, may I ask? Double doink. I just want to let our audience know that if they want to get a probably superior review for this movie from Adam, because <laughs> I'm not good at this, they can go listen to Movie Toast Review episode 16 or The Tasmanian Devil is Loose in the Theater. I was not on that one, but I'm sure a superior review to this movie was given at that yeah, point. It was mediocre. Anyway, sometimes you watch a movie and you hate it. And sometimes you watch a movie and you don't know what the writers were thinking. And you Mm -hmm. just hope that they enjoy the paycheck they got. (laughs) Because this movie, I hated this movie. Don't see this movie. Don't show your kids this movie. (laughs) It's not even a Scooby-Doo movie. I don't even, this is one of those instances where a studio is like, what kind of intellectual property or like something audiences already love. So they just like Uh... take what they own and I'm forgetting the word for it, and they just spit it out there. It's not even a <laughs> Scooby-Doo movie. Yeah. Not at all. It, I did touch base on this. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't even know. I mean, basically, these guys must have watched Avengers Endgame and then wrote this because... Oh, my God. <laughs> it's just Avengers. There's no mystery. There's no Scooby-Doo. Mm-hmm. 
and the gang isn't even together for 90% of the movie. They're with Mark Wahlberg, who's Blue Falcon, which is another Hanna-Barbera character, and, like, other Hanna-Barbera characters show up, like, it's the Avengers, (laughs) and, like, Fred gets a shield, and, like, he's Captain America and attacks, like, the dog and the bad guy, who's another Hanna-Barbera character from a different series entirely, uh, Dick Dastardly. Dick Dastardly. Dastardly. Yep. Yeah. And he's got the dog, Mutley. Mutley. And the, the bad guy's trying to collect three skulls. And once he gets three skulls, he can like do whatever he's going to do. And if no- Indiana Jones doesn't stop him. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis, <laughs> shut the fuck up and let the boy shit on the movie. <laughs> Why? And this movie's just bad. So uh, it, it's not a Scooby Doo movie. And then they don't even, if they're going to go ahead and take like Captain Caveman and like all of these. Uh, who's this movie for? Because I want to say <laughs> beloved Hanna <laughs> Barbera characters, but they're not really like. 75 year old people? Yeah, they're not really that <laughs> beloved. And you're missing like really good ones like Huckleberry Hound or like Baba Louie, Squiddy Diddly, Yaki, uh, what's his name? Doodle. No, I feel like you're making names up right now. Is Hong Hong Kong Fooey in there? (laughs) Hong Kong Fooey's one. No, he's not in there. He's not in the movie, but he's like. Yeah, no Flintstones, (laughs) no Jetsons. No, no. Guys we care about. There's a Exit there's a picture, stage left even. There's a picture (laughs) of Barney Rubble somewhere. Because I read the (laughs) I read the IMDB thing. And, oh yeah, there's, there's a no silhouette. snaggle puss. Yep. I just like what mm-hmm. a missed opportunity. I don't get I don't get uh, anything that's going on in this movie. I don't understand. It is a superhero movie. Aren't we tired of superhero movies? Oh man, it commits the cardinal sin of computer generated animation, which oh. is ever since Despicable Me did the minions, every single animated film has to have like a copy and paste cute little porg minion thing the fish from the lorax all of it all the time it's always so who is it in this it's like this robot robot thing that turns into it's like a baby but it's a robot turns into a scorpion it doesn't make sense but (laughs) it's a transformer what it's a baby it's a baby yeah it's basically a transformer with a baby's person is it hanna barbera's jar jar no it's just it's just just robots when you make computer generated animation you create like a profile like of the character it's it's like yeah positive as a skin and a thing and it's just really easy to copy and paste it into plethora of things that's why but Corey, are you saying you don't like dusty the vacuum robot (laughs) (laughs) is that the name of him (laughs) that that part, I was like, what? This is a good <laughs> movie? Dick Dastardly takes one of the robots, the one of the no-name robots, it doesn't have a name, rips off its head, throws its head into a furnace, and then attaches a dust buster to its head <laughs> as a new head. And then Velma See, that's funny to me. empties the filter. Well, then we just found out no, who no, this was Daphne, wasn't it? <laughs> 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 oh my god but Corey, Corey, so can, can, can we get to real truth here you gotta love the cameo with uh, Simon Cowell right that totally made sense no he, no, <laughs> and, and no when Adam movie? mentioned that oh fuck me oh my god Sorry, and then at Corey. the end to shoehorn in like a mask reveal thing that is completely out of place and doesn't make any sense because he's been dick dastardly the whole time and he's obviously appears and kidnaps them multiple times as Dick Dastardly. Hey, he was also a They're very like, hot cop that Fred wanted to bone. Yeah, which is like, oh, this movie has so many like inappropriate things uh-huh. for kids that they shoehorned in there. And talk about the subliminal far-left agenda NPR listening people that wrote this movie. They just like shoehorn in like Ruth Bader Ginsburg mm-hmm. and toxic masculinity and oh gosh, it's just like Ira Glass is there. Like he's listening to NPR. I'm like, what are you? <laughs> uh, these people, they just, it's just like they watch the Avengers. It was written by committee. I hope they enjoy their money. I, I don't even know why I picked this movie. I think, oh, I picked this movie. Let me explain that. I picked this movie because one of the previous hosts of this show, John, claimed about a year and a half ago that this movie is just going to be a ripoff of Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island because (laughs) that is considered by many people to be one of the stronger Scooby-Doo movies and they were just going to rip it off and cash in. And I watched it to see if he was right because he was wrong about so much. And yet again, (laughs) he was wrong. (laughs) He was wrong. But the effort was not worth (laughs) the mental strain. And I don't know where to go with this. I think I just No, you're spot on. No, you're very right. I agree. It's not a Scooby-Doo movie. (laughs) Green light or red light, Corey? 
<laughs> Sounds like a green. It's a red, it's a red light, dude. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh. It was a joke. Like, it's like, who is this for? It's, got, it's, it's basically too violent and got too many bad words and like too much subliminal messaging to be for like an actual young kid. And all the jokes are written by like a 30 to 45 year old man. It's like, it sounds like you're discovering what most children's television actually is. And then all the characters, (laughs) all the characters are like for only people who would recognize them, like this intellectual property that we're exploiting is just like, would only be recognized by like generitarians or whatever. People who are alive, like when these characters are popular. (laughs) I guess, I got to mention, because this goes with exactly what you're saying. Literally earlier today, my sister made this comment. I I picked up a box of Fruity Pebbles, and she's like, you know, any kids looking at this, their only frame of reference of the Flintstones are breakfast cereal and vitamins. There is (laughs) nothing else. I mean, is... Is that what right. constitutes fun for the whole family? It's like you can all sit down and watch this together, and Grandpa will enjoy the character <laughs> seeing a Captain Caveman again in the flesh after sixty years, <laughs> and uh, Mom and Dad will enjoy the uh, the leftist humor peppered in with all the sexual references, and then the kids will enjoy the zany dog that talks with the superhero nonsense with roller coasters and and mm. and uh, ancient. This connects to like ancient <laughs> Rome or some shit. Mm. I just don't, you know. It's like just okay, here's what I'm saying. I don't know. Just like I can't even speak as fast as I'm thinking. <laughs> this movie is such a waste of time that you might as well show your kid a superhero movie like The Avengers Endgame because this is just like more expensive to watch than that currently, <laughs> and it's schlocky. I own this movie now. Oh, I'm, I'm never sorry. gonna watch it. Yeah, so you can what? like either pay twenty to $25 to show your kids this or you can get yourself like a Netflix or Disney Plus subscription for like six bucks or you can steal it and you know you can watch uh, your kid can see some quality thing for free you know would it blow your mind to know that this movie made a fuckload of money so it's probably getting a sequel <laughs> I stopped having faith in the world sometime back in 2011 <laughs> so you know that's fine that's right. about what I expect well that's no that's it I'm sorry but I think you're putting, that's almost putting too much stock in the system when, so you, now all of our job is to let the sequel die. Like it's uh, true. It, don't go pay for it. Don't. Yeah. It. I haven't watched so don't, it yet. Don't so reinforce, I'm, I'm, don't I'm, reinforce I'm, the reason. Exactly. Don't yeah. reinforce the reason why they thought to bet on something that was already bad. Cause chances are that some of the people making it also <laughs> knew it was bad. Oh like, yeah. All right, it, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it yeah. here on movie toast. So we are telling you right now, for the sake of humanity, do not <laughs> go and donate any more money to this movie. There you go. <laughs> because if you keep paying them money, they're just going to keep making the same movie, thinking spare. that they're doing the right thing. Yes. Spare your children, please. Spare your children. Hide your future. kids. Hide your wife. Throw away skin. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, uh, they're making bad movies all up in here. It's so, it's so horrible. All right. So I got a question for Corey and Adam. Dennis, you didn't see the movie, right? Oh, nope. I didn't nope. even touch. Okay. I didn't even touch in on how derivative this movie is to like. Go ahead. Go literally, ahead. that's a good word. That came out in the last like, five means. years. It's like it Wonder Park mixed in with it, mixed in with like Stranger <laughs> Things. I oh. liked it. I liked it. So I did. I liked. It. Like, like the people who things. wrote this were just like, hey, what'd you watch last week, Frank? Well, I watched this clown movie. Oh, let's <laughs> put that in somewhere. To our thing. Everybody oh, okay. likes the clown movie. Yeah. Oh, I watched this movie called Wonder Park. Uh, I don't think anyone saw it because it did really bad at the box <laughs> office. Uh, but there was this roller coaster scene. Let's rip that off frame for frame and insert it here. And we'll have Marky Wahlberg say something about loops. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I got. Can I ask my question to Adam and Corey because you guys have seen the movie? I'm throwing a wrench in uh, uh, for the tidbits. I gotta know, and it's I'm, I'm leading it into a question, so it's gonna be all right. You guys can yell at me later if you want. The role of Shaggy went to Forte. Will Forte, right? Yeah. Yep. So the there's one, two, three, four, five other awesome actors. I want to know, do you think that that would have helped this movie or is it still a stinker, red light, don't go see it? I'll tell you right away, you change the voice. It doesn't matter. The movie's still a stinker. But who okay. are the options? So the other actors, Jason I, Lee, Justin Long, Bill Hader, Patton Oswald, and Jack motherfucking black i love no. all those guys but no i no. forte did yeah. fine they're not going to change That's, the material they're doing what whatever's written 
That's actually, I do want to say, I do want to say, I got to stand up for every actor who took a job working on this movie. Mark Wahlberg, Zac Efron. Um, there's others that I'm forgetting their names, but those are the two names. I like the voices. I recognize watching Jason this, Isaacs, Ken look Jong, up. Ken Tracy Jong, Morgan. Ken Jong, JC Morgan. They all did a great job. It's no fault of their own of theirs. Simon Cowell. That, that the writing <laughs> is just like so phoned in. It's unreal. Oh mm-hmm. no. You know, all right. I, I it's just, I don't under even understand like why you went and tried to get an A-list celebrity cast for the voices. Like get the guys who are doing the cartoons. Get the, yeah. Get the actual people that do because it's because you're trying to get the parents of the kids that want to watch it to watch it too yeah you got to give them the extra incentive to spend the act the real money on on streaming it in their house there's a cool tidbit that i found captain caveman calls the second cerberus skull a slag hoople in the flintstones 1960 wilma flintstones maiden name is slag hoople that's, that's kind of pretty badass that's oh cool. redeemed the whole movie green light <laughs> 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 This is why we oh, yeah. get complaints that we're negative on this podcast. <laughs> no, every, like, no, no, Corey, everything you're saying is accurate. I, I, I'm agreeing with you. Okay. Tid but I still like it for some reason. <laughs> I'm a number fucking child. Uh, the bowling alley. Corey, you remember the bowling alley in the movie, right? It's yeah. called, the name of the bowling alley is called the Takamoto Bowl. And this was named so because of Scooby-Doo's original designer. I'm going to butcher his first name but his last name's takamoto uh iwao iwao takamoto iwao takano and the <laughs> the building itself the the takamoto bowling alley itself was modeled after the exterior of the original hanna barbera studio building that's so pretty that's badass kind of cool. it's very similar to nakatomi plaza in Los <laughs> Angeles. Oh, attacked oh. by terrorists in the 1980s there's your uh, tidbit good, number thank god for one lone <laughs> cop and a ventilation yep. system okay and so for the tidbit number three, in one shot, there is a billboard which reads Pit Stop. Corey, do you remember seeing a billboard that reads Pit Stop? No, me neither. Well, it's okay that you didn't see it, but I'm going to tell you why it was called Pit Stop. Because Penelope Pit Stop was another Hanna-Barbera character who appeared alongside Dick Dastardly in the Wacky Races 1968. And Wacky then later races. she got her own show that was called The Perils of Penelope Pitstop. That's so stupid. That's so raven. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> just like, why is this movie called Scooby-Doo or Scoob or anything? Why isn't it just called like Hanna-Barbera? Hanna-Barbera. Or, Bonanza. You should probably just not watch this movie. And let's say goodbye, everyone, because, you know, I didn't want to talk about the movie. And then I spent 20 minutes talking about the movie. Yeah, but I think that's very important because I gave a mediocre review I, and I wanted people to see it. And you gave a totally different one and your points were very valid. Thank yeah, you. and that's what we're about here. We, we got to have those differences of, of opinion. That's, let's be representative of the audience. This is, no, so, we, we are not going to agree. That is for sure. Yeah. So if you, the listeners, agree with Movie Toaster Adam, then still don't go see it because it's a red light. You should not be supporting this and don't give them any no, more money. No, you should go see it if you agree with me. <laughs> if you agree with All right, here's what we do. Hey, on fucking Twitter, just uh, come over and let us know. We're at Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, fucking Discord, uh, at movie underscore toast. Let us know if I'm right, if Corey's right, if we're both fucking wrong. Who knows? Uh, hashtag I watched it. Hashtag didn't watch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, just you have a good night. Yeah. Hey, if you like the podcast, if you want to tell us who's right, who's wrong, get at us at Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, YouTube, anywhere but Facebook. Uh, we're at movie underscore toast. Stay home, everybody. Stay healthy. Stay toasty. Wait, wait, Corey. <laughs> but you surely loved at the end where. They're back at Venice Beach, and the Blue Falcon's a DJ, and they're throwing a party, right? No, that was another. <laughs> that's another very derivative thing that like just signals the end of a kids movie. Now, someone shows up and plays music. What oh, what old people like consider hip music, <laughs> and yeah, and like Shrek all the up, characters baby. start dancing, and then damn ooh, little credits to the pop song that is what's the song the, Adam whatever from cool. The end of Shrek? <laughs> I thought love was only meant for fairy tales. Yeah. <laughs> meant for someone else, but not for me. Love was out to get me. Oh, That's here we go. the way. I don't know. 
nail was in the coffin for me when I heard derivative again. That that told me everything I needed to yeah. know. We are done.